A lover's quarrel turned deadly, with the suspect given the death penalty even though there has been a moratorium on capital punishment in Korea. This is the murder case of Chang Jae-jin. It was 5 p.m. on May 19, 2014. Chang Jae-jin, a Daegu University student who was taking some time off, paid a visit to the home of his ex-girlfriend, who lived with her parents. His ex, surnamed Kwon, broke off their relationship about a month earlier, after a spat turned violent. Impersonating a plumber, Chang determined that only Kwon's parents were home. He left and prepared a few items, such as flour, extra clothes, bandages, and disinfectant, only to return to the apartment soon after. He rang the doorbell, told the person who answered that he was there to repair pipes, and entered the home. Chang headed straight for the bathroom and stayed there for a very long time, so long that Kwan's mother asked him what was taking so long. He lured her into the bathroom, locked the doors, and sprayed her eyes with lacquer, practically blinding her. Using a hammer that he brought with him, he then struck her in the head dozens of times and attacked her with a kitchen knife. She died at the scene. Terrified, Kwan's father tried to escape, but Chang chased after him, hit him with the same hammer multiple times, and stabbed him with another weapon. The father also died on the spot. Chang covered the bodies with blankets, stole money from wallets of the mother and father, and even took a load off and drank alcohol that he found in the home. He then pretended to be the mother and messaged his ex-girlfriend, sending her the Cacao Talk message, come home soon, I have a coming of age day gift for you. Quan finally returned home a little past midnight. As soon as she opened the door, Chang forcibly pulled her inside and took her to the bathroom where her mother lay dead. He told her, your dad is still alive, and if you want to save him, you'd better do what I say. And of course, this was a lie, as he had murdered her father hours earlier. He then made her strip down and raped her, after which he showed her the dead body of her father. Shocked by this, Huan injured herself and locked herself in a room. While Zhang was drinking and getting intoxicated, Quan threw herself out the window of the room she was in, falling four floors to the ground outside. Fortunately, she was found by a security guard who immediately called emergency services, a move that saved her life. When the paramedics arrived at the apartment, they found the slain couple. But Chang Jiejin was nowhere to be seen as he managed to get away. The question arose, why did Chang visit the home of his ex-girlfriend and kill her parents in cold blood? He was said to have been violent since his school days. This carried over to his time in the Marine Corps, where he was reportedly imprisoned for one year for assaulting a junior soldier. After he was discharged, he returned to college and soon became the president of an unspecified university club. That's probably when he started to become self-absorbed, especially because he was the center of attention. He was very sociable, and this led him to meet Kwan, a member of the club in February 2014. They hit it off right away and started dating. Two months into their relationship, Chang spoke ill of his new girlfriend to her friends. Kwan found out and complained to him why he was talking about her behind her back. Apparently irritated by her, Chang hit his girlfriend, and for this, Quan dumped him and avoided him as much as possible at school. A few days later, Chang randomly saw his ex in a restroom near the university's lab and tried to drag her to his place. She resisted, but got hit in the process and was taken to his place and assaulted yet again. Quan's friends started to get worried about her as she was taking so long in the restroom. They went over to Chang's place, found her there, and brought her to safety. This incident spread throughout the university, and Chang had to step down from his role as club president. 
Quan was given the diagnosis that it would take her three weeks to completely recover from the physical abuse she suffered. This made her parents furious. They visited Chang's parents to complain, for which the latter apologized profusely and made their son take a leave of absence. The scolding by his parents infuriated him, and his stepping down of the club president position made him feel like his whole world was falling apart. This culmination of anger and rage likely was his breaking point and the start of his detailed plan to kill his ex-girlfriend and her parents. If you look at the items he took to Quan's home, you can see how meticulously he prepared for his evil act. He took flour, which he spread on the bodies, as he knew that blood would get everywhere. He likely packed a disinfectant and bandages knowing that he could cut himself while using the kitchen knife. There was even elevator CCTV footage that showed Chang holding a notebook with what he was going to say to enter the home written on it and him practicing his lines. Now, as soon as Chang left Wen's apartment, he stopped by a store to buy alcohol and a knife and then headed home. He drank and fell asleep. Soon after, he was arrested. And on September 19th, 2014, Chang Jiejin received the death penalty during his first trial. The verdict was so unexpected that he appealed and submitted an over 60-page letter of apology. But his efforts were short-lived as the court again gave him the death penalty, citing his cruel and merciless inclination of violence and premeditation. The Supreme Court confirmed the original verdict of the death penalty for the 28-year-old Chang Jiejin, making him at the time the youngest person on death row. Chang Jiejin, he committed the most atrocious crimes imaginable to give the worst pain to his ex-girlfriend for breaking up with him. His punishment, as harsh as it is, is probably not enough for Quan, who has to live with a sense of guilt for the rest of her life. The case did shed light on the issue of dating violence, which was tolerated more often than not previously. There are likely many victims who are afraid to speak out about their pain and suffering. But remember, any kind of abuse, whether it's physical, verbal, and even stalking, will not and cannot be condoned under any circumstances. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.